don't ever slow up, no I don't take shit. I got no love for the fakeness If you wanna play tough and wanna hate this I'll always show up and make a statement I don't ever slow up, no I don't take shit. I got no love for the fakeness If you wanna play tough and wanna hate this I'll always show up and make a statement Everything I do, so instinctive and so passionate Every word I move, so descriptive like an adjective I got a vendetta against people who patented it Being negative when you should be getting after it I got facts over facts over tracks This and that, spitting slow, spitting fast I can roast, I can gas, think I'm okay at last But I don't know if that can erase all the past And the pettiness, a oh, reflection of the emptiness Hilarious, you think you're worth my time, you're delirious Mysterious, because you are behind a fake exterior Inferior, you know I'll always be a bit superior Get off of me, this ain't no humble brag I want you to hear words, you can say them back I want you to feel free from the chains at last And to believe in what you got, it was built to last, yeah now that I've been put through, I never got anyone's help. I had to do it all myself. I don't ever slow up, no, I don't take shit. I got no love for the fakeness. If you wanna play tough and wanna hate this, I'll always show up and make a statement. I don't ever slow up, no, I don't take shit. I got no love for the fakeness. If you wanna play tough and wanna hate this, I'll always show up and make a statement. I'm gonna learn the consequence of being incompetent. Mental health is confidence, dreams and some honestness. I'm not here to save the day, that's for you to take away. I could play a million mind games, but instead of safe, something not illogical, something that is topical. Rub it on and watch it go, make yourself unstoppable. Dreams are irresponsible, but they're always possible. If you just believe, you could be so remarkable. Thoughts in my head, a collage and they spread. I'll be great one day, going off of my meds. No, I'm not giving up, no, I'm not giving in. I will make it to the top, taking off in the wind. I gotta make it. I'm saving every day to taste it. I'm patient, but my mind, it can hardly take it. I'm chasing a dream that I've had for several ages. A bacon, modern kingdom for the taking. Now that I've been put through, I never got anyone's help. I had to do it all myself. Slow up, no I don't take shit. I got no love for the fakeness. If you wanna play tough and wanna hate this, I'll always show up and make a statement. I don't ever slow up, no I don't take shit. I got no love for the fakeness. If you wanna play tough and wanna hate this, I'll always show up and make a statement. I don't ever slow up, no I don't take shit. I got no love for the fakeness. If you wanna play tough and wanna hate this, I'll always show up. Slow up, no, I don't take shit. I got no love for the fakeness. If you wanna play tough and wanna hate this, I'll always show up. I don't ever slow up, no, I don't take shit. I got no love for the fakeness. If you wanna play tough and wanna hate this, I'll always show up and make a statement. I don't ever slow up, no, I don't take shit. I got no love for the fakeness. If you wanna play tough and wanna hate this, I'll always show up and make a statement. Everything I do, so instinctive and so passionate Every word I move, so descriptive like an adjective I got a vendetta against people who patented it Being negative when you should be getting after it I got facts over facts over tracks This and that, spitting slow, spitting fast I can roast, I can gas, think I'm okay at last But I don't know if that can erase all the past And the pettiness, a oh, reflection of the emptiness Hilarious, you think you're worth my time, you're delirious Mysterious, because you are behind a fake exterior Inferior, you know I'll always be a bit superior Get off of me, this ain't no humble brag I want you to hear words, you can say them back I want you to...
I'm sorry, I'm speaking to myself then, because I wasn't added to the thing. Right, well, I hope you all had a lovely weekend. We're now on Monday, the 30th. God, we're in October tomorrow. I don't even want to think about that, because I know from sometime in October onwards, my son is going to start plaguing me with so many days left for so many Fridays until Christmas, so many weeks till where come Christmas Day, I want to kick the shit out of him. Anyway, let's forget Christmas for now. That's a long way off. A long, long, long way off. I've got a birthday to sort out before then. <laughs> All right, um, tonight I've got, we're going to look at the indictments, like one of the indictments and the other one is like a letter that, or an email that the prosecution sent to the judge, right? So we're going to be looking at that. Okay. That's got a lot more detail in info on. I was going to go in and sort of redact some of the words out, and I thought, you know what, no, I'm not, I'm not doing it. If it's got names of people who shouldn't be named, like children's names or, or dresses or date of birth, then yes, I'd redact all that, but it hasn't. To my knowledge, I haven't seen young enough. It has got a lot of other words in there that could be triggering, and I will apologise now. That's why I've got my warning going along the bottom and my warning up in the top corner. Right? And, hang on. What, here we are. I've also got this. Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Some viewers may find the following footage deeply disturbing. Warning, some viewers may find the following footage deeply disturbing. Right. So, I've got it covered. Um, I won't say certain words as I read it out. I'll just go and blank. Okay. So that it, I, I won't get. Like, let's say YouTube are very strict on certain words you use. But I've seen every YouTube channel putting these words out there. No, I'm not getting restricted. So, hold on. I'm just going to play, put some music on because I've just got to go and sort some out in the kitchen. So, I'll just pop Uh, this one back on. I won't be long, I'll be a few minutes. If that. Be right back. Every word I move so descriptive like an adjective I got a vendetta against people who patented Being negative when you should be getting after it I got facts over facts over tracks This and that, spitting slow, spitting fast I could roast, I could gas, think I'm okay at last But I don't know if that can erase all the past And the pettiness, a reflection of the emptiness Hilarious, you think you're worth my time? You're delirious, mysterious Because you are behind a fake exterior Inferior, you know I'll always be a bit superior Get off of me, this ain't no humble I want you to hear words, you can say them back I want you to feel free from the chains at last And to believe in what you got, it was built to last, yeah Now that I've been put through I never got anyone's help I had to do it all myself Right, I'm back I'm back I just have to sort my cats out 
because I could see them ju because where my where I sit in what is my enclosed balcony because I've got windows that go all the way around. It used to be uh, an open balcony where you could come out and you could look over the back sides and everything, which is pretty dangerous. So you got a window from the kitchen looking out. So now you got a window looking into the balcony, which is enclosed. And my cat, one cat was jumping up on my work service, which she knows it's not supposed to do. And the other cat was constantly moaning. And I know why, because, well, they've got food down, so I don't know why. You know what I mean? They're just pains. Anyway, we're going to... What's the first one? Oh, yeah. I'm got, I know this is 13 days old. I'm coming into this light. I'm playing catch-up. Right, because when I first heard about this case, I've, I only heard that it was like a racketeering, right? And I was looking into other cases at the time. Because I'm not into the celebrity side of it. I'm not. But because it's a criminal side of it, I'm looking into it. That's the only reason I'm looking at this case. Because of the criminal side of it and the fact that uh, SA is being, uh, being mentioned and young children have been mentioned and trafficking has been mentioned and D-R-U-G-S and G-U-N, right? So I thought, wow, that ain't just trafficking. Um, that ain't just racketeering, right? That's a lot. So I'm playing, playing catch up on this. So we're going to watch this interview. This, is it the uh, prosecutor or someone put out? I don't know. Hold on. Yeah. It's a prosecutor. He explains the charges against Sean Diddy Coombs. And I thought he can explain it better than I. I've got the information here. I've got all ready to go out to be shown on the screen. But I thought, let him explain it better. He knows what he's talking about. I don't. So, hold on. Let's just make this bigger. No, hold on a minute. I've got to go into my stream. Oh, God. Right, I think that should do it now. So let's listen. Attorney for New York. My name is Damian Williams, and I'm the U.S. Attorney here in the Southern District of New York. Today, I'm announcing the unsealing of a three-count indictment, charging Sean Combs with racketeering conspiracy, sex trafficking, interstate transportation for prostitution. The indictment alleges that between at least 2008 and the present. Combs abused, threatened, and coerced victims to fulfill his sexual desires, protect his reputation, and conceal his conduct. As alleged in the indictment, to carry out this conduct, Sean Combs led and participated in a racketeering conspiracy that used the business empire he controlled to carry out criminal activity, including sex trafficking, forced labor, kidnapping, arson, bribery, and the obstruction of justice. Let me say a little bit more about the charges. The indictment alleges that Combs abused and exploited women and other people for years and in a variety of ways. As alleged, Combs used force, threats of force, and coercion to cause victims to engage in extended sexual performances with male commercial sex workers, some of whom he transported or caused to be transported over state lines. Combs allegedly planned and controlled the sex performances which he called freak offs, and he often electronically recorded them. The freak offs sometimes lasted days at a time, involved multiple commercial sex workers, 
and often involved a variety of narcotics, such as ketamine, ecstasy, and GHB, which Combs distributed to the victim to keep them obedient and compliant. As alleged, when Combs didn't get his way, he was violent, and he subjected victims to physical, emotional, and verbal abuse so that they would participate in the freak-offs, and that Combs hit, kicked, threw objects at, and dragged victims, at times by their hair. On one occasion in March of 2016, that conduct was captured on video and later reported in the media. Specifically, Combs kicked, dragged, and threw a vase at a victim in a Los Angeles hotel when the victim was attempting to flee. As alleged, these assaults often resulted in injuries to the victims, which took days or weeks to heal. In addition to the violence, the indictment alleges that Combs threatened and coerced victims to get them to participate in the freak-offs. He used the embarrassing and sensitive recordings he made of the freak-offs as collateral against the victims. And the indictment alleges that he maintained control over the victims in several ways, including by giving them drugs, by giving and threatening to take away financial support or housing, by promising them career opportunities, by monitoring their whereabouts, and even by dictating their physical appearance. Because of all of this, the indictment alleges that the victims did not believe they could refuse Combs without risking their security or facing more abuse. The indictment also alleges other acts of violence undertaken by Combs and others, including violence against witnesses to his abuse, kidnapping, and arson. The indictment alleges that on more than one occasion, Combs carried or brandished firearms to intimidate and threaten victims and witnesses. Hi there. I was, I was wondering where you were. Uh, I'm sorry, but I had to get a new Facebook page. So I've been trying to find you again on Facebook, right? Um, because I wanted to message you just to check how you was. So I'm glad you get your you're getting better. I am well. I'm good. But um, I have got a new Facebook page, so it is in the description. Should be in the description. The link because Facebook was being arseholes, and apparently I put some on one of my Facebook accounts that went against the community guidelines. I'm trying to figure out what it was. They wasn't telling me. And I was off Facebook for, what, nearly three months. I couldn't even open a new one up in a new email or anything. It wouldn't let me. So then eventually, I just thought, I'll try once more to open a new one up. So they did. And it let me. But right. My grandkids are fine. No, my grandkids are fine. I know. I hate Facebook. And then the other week, X did one on me. When I went logged in, it took me to a different account. Well, it had my picture, my old logo on it. And I'm thinking, that's my old logo, but that isn't my email address. And I had to go on my phone to get the details off my phone to log in to Twitter on my laptop. But I'm going to lose it big time here with Facebook and Twitter. I'm one of the nicest people on YouTube. And I don't put anything offensive out there. <laughs> right, I'll go and have a look now, everything. No, I couldn't find any. It wouldn't let me open a new Facebook page at all. And I'm going, I'm going, I'm going. Mentally, I'm losing it big time. So, it's good to see you back here. I'm glad you're well. Right, let's see. <laughs> Let's have a 
see, bang it. There you are. Requested, accepted. Good to, good to have you back on board, sweetheart. Anyway, as you can see, I'm now looking at the Sean Diggy Coons case. I'm not looking at this as, as, as from the celebrity point of view. Because me, I know so all about celebrities. I'm not joking. I've got one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five. Six sides of a paper. Six sides of paper. With names on. And I'm thinking, who the hell are these people? And like all in with the celebrity crowd. All in with the hip-hop, the whatever the music I'm thinking I've got to, I've got to se segregate segregate this. I can't look on it as the music. I've got to look on it as a criminal case. So I'm not looking at these people as musicians as all that law. I'm looking at them as victims or criminals. That's it. So we're listening to what this prosecutor is saying. Because he can explain it a lot better than I can. Now, Combs did not do this all on his own. As I mentioned, Combs has been charged with RICO conspiracy. He used his business and employees of that business and other close associates to get his way. Those individuals allegedly included high-ranking supervisors in the business, personal assistants, security staff, and household staff. The indictment alleges that those individuals facilitated the freak offs. They booked the hotel rooms and stocked them with the supplies, including drugs, baby oil, personal lubricant, extra linens, and lighting. When the hotel rooms got damaged, they helped clean it up. They arranged for victims and commercial sex workers to travel for the freak offs and they delivered yes, large quantities of cash her. to Combs to pay for the them. commercial sex workers. The indictment also alleges that they helped Combs cover up his crimes. During the March 2016 incident at the LA hotel that I mentioned earlier, a member of the hotel security staff intervened and Combs attempted to bribe. What gets me? Why? I know he had power, I know he had money, right? But this guy did not just all of a sudden become powerful and wealthy and think, oh, I'm going to start having these freak-off parties. I'm going to start bringing in men and women from out of state. I'm going to start bringing in young children overnight. No, that didn't happen overnight, right? He didn't just think, I'm going to start doing this so I can get money this way. So, I want, I'd like to know more about his background, his bringing his lifestyle when he was a child. And I'm going to be looking into that because there's got to be something in his background, right? I can understand back in 1990, it was a big hush us, don't tell anyone you're gay or whatever, right? But now it's 2024. In the 2000s, literally, that went out the window. You know what I mean? So having all these parties is fine. If they are consenting adults. Right? If they are consenting adults. Yes. But I want to know. I'll get on to that in a minute. Right? As long as they are consenting adults, I have no problem with what he was doing, yeah? But when you got women being forced to stay in hotel rooms, being brought in, being forced to stay in hotel rooms, being given uh, the drips, the, uh, what, oh, those drips to, for the fluids, to get fluids back into them, right? And all that, that is not right. That's not consenting. When a woman says, no, I want to go home, 
then you no, know, she wants to go home. You let her go. But if you're going to be keeping these people and men in these hotel rooms, not just for a night, for days, then that's not, they're not consenting to that. I like it, IV drips. You know what I mean? And now, uh, if you watched, if you watched, I don't know if you've seen last night's one, I was reading the, I wasn't reading, I was showing the, a tape of a YouTuber reading the story of Katie Porter, her lost words. I've now got that book, it's coming tomorrow. I can't wait to get my hands on that book. Right? And she talks, she says a lot. Whether it's true, it's hard to say. But I think, I really do believe this, what she said is true. Right? But in there, she mentions a mix, Mr. X. Now, this Mr. X, she does not like. Now, I've got a feeling I know who that Mr. X is. I really do. Because I've been watching a lot of, yesterday, all weekend, and today, it's just been back-to-back -back YouTube videos of, from certain people, not just from gossip YouTubers, you know what I mean, from people who know the industry, yeah, and this one name kept coming up today, and I'm thinking, ooh, ooh, could that be Mr. X? Now, if you like me and you've been watching a lot of YouTube channels, you probably have been hearing a certain name coming out. And Jaguar has mentioned it. She's mentioned it. I'm not going to say, but I think I know who he is. I think I know who Mr. X is. Right? It's someone who is going to ride or die with Diddy. Is a ride or die, die sort of guy. You know what I mean? And I think I know who that is. But for some reason, she wouldn't say his name in the book. Right, she mentioned a lot of other names. She mentioned names like... Uh, Cuba Gooding Jr., Justin Coombs. No, she did not them, sorry. Well, I've just mentioned them. <laughs> what was the name she mentioned? Oh, God. Biggie. Uh, blah, blah, blah. I know. Who's that? Tupac. Birthday name. Quincy Jones. Tupac's girlfriend and daughter of Quincy Jones. No, Kagaga is Tupac. Kagaga was Tupac's girlfriend and daughter of Quincy Jones. Well, she mentioned... Oh, well, what did she... Um, she mentioned quite a few names, actually, in that book. Right, but this one, Mr. X, and I think I know who it is. If anyone, and I've only been up on this gate since I've been only following this case since what well, I think Friday evening. Friday evening, because then I, t I w turned some on on YouTube. I went, What I thought that was just a racketeering case, you know what I mean? I heard about his house being raided and all that, lot. but then I, heard, I was listening more. I thought, Whoa, that ain't just a racketeering. Right, so, and then all these other names are coming out, like Jennifer Lopez, oh, a certain person really wants something to go down with her, don't they, a certain couple of people really want something to get to happen to that woman, I think she's involved in it, or was involved in it, why, right? you're telling me you've, you've had such uh, a close relationship with someone, even if it was only for two years, that you didn't know about these 
freak off parties. Christ's sake, she even carried a G-U-N in a nightclub for him. So if, she, if she's willing to do that, she knows about the F FO parties. So, but she got away with that carrot, with that gun incident, that G U N incident. Oh damn! But let's carry on because this is not looking good for this man. Oh God's sake! I hate my most. Come on! Come on! Get up! Get up. Right. I'm the staff member with a stack of cash to make sure that what happened was kept quiet. And as the indictment alleges, in late 2023, after public allegations were made about Combs' crimes, he and others pressured witnesses and victims to stay silent, including by making phone calls to witnesses and victims and giving them a false narrative of what they had experienced. It's a rabbit hole. As alleged, Combs used others to help conceal his abuse by monitoring and preventing victims from leaving a location in order to hide their injuries or by locating and contacting a victim who had attempted to flee. As part of this investigation, in March of this year, special agents from HSI executed search warrants at Combs' residences in Miami. I'd just like to stop it here, I'd just like to say hello to everyone on X who's watching. Please share this video share this video right because there's some people out there like me who still haven't no really clicked on about this case right so get this out there get everyone's attention because if there is children involved in this case from outside of state any children, not just his own, but any child involved in these FO parties, right? They, they need to be found. These women as well who've been brought in from out of state and whatever, they need to be found. The men who have been brought in from out of state, they need to be found. Because you don't know what's going on in their head now after what they've been put through, where they could have been there for days on end. And I've seen someone put a comment on once, on a TikTok, right? And they said, why do the women go there then? Oh, I'm not even going to put a reply to that quick answer. I'm not going to even comment on that. Because I thought, hold oh, on, these women work for pimps, yeah? If they don't do what they are told, they will get beaten. So they have to go. These guys, they work, they've they got pimps as well and whatever. So if they don't go, they get beaten. It's not like, oh, well, I don't really want to go to his parties. Well, it's like you. You're effing going. You've got no say in this. They had no say. Right? And to be held there for like up to three days. No, no. As I said, and there's a lot of people going on about, ah, oh, but there's these celebrities, these big known celebrities were at these FO parties. Oh, them. A lot of them went, but left by say one. 1 a.m. in the morning. And that, it was at like 2 a.m. in the morning that the FO parties really started getting going. Right? So, anything, anyone who was there from after 2 a.m., then you could say they were involved. But anyone who was there up to say 1 a.m., 1 30 ish, and then left, they weren't involved. They just went to what they thought was just a nice party. You know what I mean? A get together of celebrities, right? Getting your name out there, getting publicity out there. 
And when you're a new singer in the mu- in that music business, in any business, if you're invited to a party, you're not going to say no. You're going to go, oh, publicity. Yes, accept, we'll go. Yeah, but this is this is like a rabbit hole. I'm not joking. Every time I look into something, I'm going down. Another there's another ab- hole. I'm going down. Then I go down. It's like a, I'm not joking. I've never seen so many names come up in a in a case before. I really haven't. And all the coincidences. I don't believe in coincidences when it comes to a criminal investigation, such as. Pneumonia. Who on earth? How many people have died of pneumonia? Uh, I know of one, two, three people I know of in this case have died from pneumonia. Right, there's probably more. But how can, and I'm thinking, how can you kill someone or have someone killed? But make it look like pneumonia. I've even researched it, as I said last night. If the police did a check on my Google search on my laptop, even on my phone, they would have me locked up. Because I've got on my laptop Google search. How can you unalive someone but make it look like they died of pneumonia? You know what I mean? And I couldn't find nothing. But in that book, people were dying from pneumonia. And Los Angeles. They also executed a warrant for Combs' electronic devices. During those searches, agents seized evidence of the crimes charged in this indictment. They seized firearms and ammunition, including three defaced AR-15s and the large capacity drum magazine. They also seized evidence of the freakoffs, electronic devices that contain images and videos of the freakoffs with multiple victims. And they seized cases and cases of the kinds of personal lubricant and baby oil that Combs' staff allegedly used to stock hotel rooms for the freakoffs more than 1,000 bottles altogether. Here are some of the items that we recovered during the searches. As you can see here, this is a drum magazine, large capacity, and it contains, I believe, 59 rounds. I mentioned as well, we recovered three AR-15s. This is a close-up shot of one of the AR-15s, and you can see right here, the serial number has been thoroughly defaced. Another picture of more ammunition and parts of two AR-15s right there. Would you believe it if I told you? Apparently, his defense team said, well, he doesn't hire his own security. So those guns are probably belong to his security team. Let that sink in. So these guns were found in a closet, in bits, some were all took apart, right? Now, what, <laughs> what security guy is going to be keeping his gun, which has been took apart, in a closet, in Diggy's home? Hmm? Not happening. Now, I want to be clear about two things. First, this office is determined to investigate and prosecute anyone who engages in sex trafficking, no matter how powerful or wealthy or famous you may be. No one should doubt our commitment on that. A year ago, Sean Combs stood in Times Square and was handed to New York City. Today, he's been indicted and will face justice in the Southern District of New York. Second, we are not done. This investigation is ongoing, 
and I encourage anyone with information about this case to come forward and to do it quickly. Anyone with information can call 1-877-4-HSI-TIP. I want to express my deep appreciation for the victims and witnesses who have used their voices and helped bring this criminal conduct to light. We would not be here without them. I also want to thank the dedicated case agents on the HSI Trafficking in Person Squad in New York. They have been with us since day one and have worked tirelessly on this investigation. They will continue to be. Yeah, as I said yesterday, the feds, right? They look into cases and they've been looking into this case, into, the, into him for years, for years. So that when they arrested him, right? They had the evidence already, all the evidence they needed, right? There and then ready to go to trial. Whereas if the normal law enforcement arrest him, they arrest him, then get all the evidence. They get so much evidence to charge him on something. And then they get the rest of the evidence while he's sitting in prison. Well, the federal, federal FBI, whatever, they don't do that. They gave all before. So they are ready to go to trial straight away. I heard that um, when there was another lawyer discussing and breaking down these these indictments, telling us how it broke down, and he said that's how the FBI work. So when you think, oh, well, they only raided his house this year, they've only been doing it, but no, 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 no. They've been watching him. They've been making all the information, getting all this information beforehand. Right? You think... Cassie, she made that claim. Now, I think she was stupid with what she did afterwards. She should have not took that money. She should not have let him pay, pay her off to shut her up. She should have pushed on him, right? Because they can't use her now in this case. They can't because she's took money. She took a payment. So they can't use her anything, really. But because of that, it's then pushed them to look, hold on, if there's that one, who else is involved? Who else is out there who could be a victim? You know what I mean? So it's gave them other avenues to look down. So as I said, they've been working on this case for years, for years. invaluable partners to us. I also want to thank the incredible agents and analysts from SDNY who have also provided tremendous assistance on this case. I'm deeply grateful for their continued work. And finally, I want to thank the outstanding career prosecutors from SDNY who are handling this case. Meredith Foster, Emily Johnson, Chrissy Slavic, Madison Smizer, and Mitzi Steiner and their supervisors, Jamie Backleapter and Jacqueline Kelly. They are members of the Civil Rights Unit in our criminal division. We created the Civil Rights Unit when I became U.S. Attorney. I'm deeply proud of their work on this and so many other cases. I'll now take some questions. Aaron Katursky, ABC. Thanks, Nick. Damien, thanks. The indictment describes aggressive, open, violent, hedonistic abuse that you say was recurrent and widely known. Why did it take law enforcement so long to intervene? How many women were victimized by Sean Combs and how many others were involved? Look, our investigation is ongoing. Um, we are committed to bringing justice to everyone who's been victimized by the defendant. Um, I can't tell you why it took so long. I think the, the, the better focus is on the fact that we are here today. Um, and we are committed to making sure that justice is done. Next question. Thank you. Julia Ainsley, NBC. Thank you for doing this. You said we are not done and that Combs did not do this alone. Do you foresee that there could be other charges related to this case? I'm not taking anything off the table. Oh, a lot. Like Fisher Newsday. Yeah. 
what's the difference between the uh, sex trafficking and uh, promoting travel for the uh, purpose of prostitution? Well, there are different crimes with different elements. I don't um, think we should get into the, the nitty gritty of the legal discussion right now, but um, the, the, the sex trafficking, we believe, they're all serious offenses, but the sex trafficking um, uh, conduct um, carries some significant penalties. And, uh, and, and we are gratified that we were able to bring that charge. Is one more coercive than the other? I'm not gonna be able to get into that, but, but you can look it up and, and, and yes, sex trafficking, especially when it involves coercion or force, um, is, is a very serious crime and it carries significant penalties. Good afternoon, Darla Miles, ABC7 New York. Thank you for this press conference and for the details. Two questions. Um, in context, if they find information where he's been with a child under 18, is he? Or younger? Right? Could they go for the death penalty? Because I know, I don't know if it was brought in in New York, but I know in, is it Florida? Yeah, Florida, they brought in that law. Now, if anyone is found with any pictures or videos of them being indiscreet with a child, right, and what all that like, they can go for the DP. I'm just wondering, I don't know. Of this indictment and the information that was presented to the grand jury, are you able to clarify the number of victims? It's mentioned plural in the indictment, but can you specify the number of victims just for this particular indictment? And secondly, can you provide details about the alleged arson? Um, unfortunately, I'm not able to provide either. Um, the number of victims, um, you are correct. Correct. They, we are intentional in saying multiple. Um, uh, the details of the arson incident um, are limited to what we have in the indictment and also the detention letter that we filed, um, which contains more details than the indictment does at various points. Um, but we don't have anything more beyond that. Next question. Lynn Tran, CNN. Um, are any of his accomplices or uh, associates under investigation? And additionally, could he face any more charges? So the investigation is ongoing. That means both as to him and to anyone else who we believe uh, committed the crime uh, with him. Next question. Julia Papa. Hi, good morning from 1010 Winds. Uh, any indication that some of the women or victims here were imprisoned in his residences? And did he have locations where he kept them? And did they were not allowed to leave? And uh, also, uh, he's indicted here, although there were searches and raids in LA, Miami. Why in New York? Well, um, I'm, I'm biased. I'm the U.S. attorney in the Southern District of New York. I think that we um, have an outstanding track record of bringing some of the most impactful, sprawling, complex, difficult um, sex trafficking, uh, human trafficking, labor trafficking, you name it, um, the Southern District of New York can do it. And so we're very proud of that. And so the scope and complexity of this investigation isn't something that we ran from. It's something that we embrace and we will continue to do that. Um, as to your question about whether he imprisoned anyone, um, all I can say is that, you know, I mentioned this March 2016 incident where something was caught on video where a victim was attempting to flee um, and there was violence that was associated with it. Um, that was at a hotel. That was Matthew Lee, Inner City Press. Sure. Uh, thanks a lot. Does your office intend to, to seek remand? Are you reaching a bail package? And if you're willing, can you, how would you contrast this with the R. Kelly case in, in EDNY in terms of the elements? Thanks. So um, we will be seeking detention. We have filed a letter um, laying out our reasoning uh, for seeking pretrial detention. Um, I'm not going to be able to expand beyond what's in the letter, but it contains um, all of the reasoning and it contains uh, the law as well. Um, there is a presumption of detention in a case like this, and we think that's warranted. John Anise, New York Daily News. Thank you. Um, I was hoping to get some more detail about the uh, searches of his residence, um, the the uh, guns, the the cases of lubricant, and the videos. Where were they found among his residence? Were they all scattered around the houses in one place? I kind of wanted to just get a better picture of um, of how that stuff was found. Well, look, I, I think that some of the details um, 
uh, that you're seeking are in the detention letter. So for instance, um, some of the, the, the AR-15s, two of the three defaced AR-15s were found in his bedroom closet in Miami, um, broken down into parts along with magazines um, with ammunition uh, loaded in them. So um, some, of the, some of that detail is in the detention letter. Beyond that, I'm not going to be able to get into uh, where other items were, were stored. Well, we're going through that detention. Ben Kochman, Post. Hey, thanks for uh, doing this. Um, your office um, was the office that uh, had been prosecuting uh, Jeffrey Epstein uh, before he uh, died uh, in custody. Um, I, I have not read your detention memo yet. It's the first thing I'm going to do uh, after this ends. But does it does the does the memo address or is your office concerned with uh, with Combs's safety in custody given um, given what happened with Epstein? So we are concerned with anyone's safety whenever they are um, detained prior to trial. It's part of our obligations to keep people um, safe as well. Um, it's part of the criminal justice system. So. Um, but I do not draw any sort of connection between um, Jeffrey Epstein's suicide and um, what may or may not happen um, to any other defendant while they are um, detained pretrial. And of course, the decision whether to um, detain the defendant will be up to a judge. Our position is that pretrial detention is warranted under the law and based on the facts of this case. Um, and I'll leave it at that. Are, are some of the prosecutors on this case uh, some of the same prosecutors that have been uh, handling and that's why they went and arrested him on the Monday evening at the hotel rather than wait for him to come in to, to them on the Tuesday morning. Because by them arresting him on the Monday night, they can then go for the detention uh, without keeping, keeping, which means having him kept in jail. Right. Whereas if if he had walked into the place and handed himself in, then the judge would have said, Well he handed himself in. So I cannot see him running, I can't see him leaving the country and all this lot if he handed himself in. And that's the reason why the feds went, or the police, well, I think it was the feds, went and arrested him on Monday so they could go for the detainment to keep him in jail. Matt, or, or that worked on the Maxwell case? So um, I'm not going to get into the, 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 the staffing. I will say that this team, this group of, 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 of AUSAs, this incredible um, group has been working on this case around the clock, um, and they've had their hands full. Next question. Gus Rosendale, uh, NBC News. Uh, good morning, sir. Uh, Combs' attorney said uh, that his client has been cooperative with investigators. He said that this morning. I was wondering if you would have a reaction to that. Um, I, let me just say this. I think that um, generally, uh, and in, with increasing frequency, the, the word cooperative or cooperating has taken on tremendous elasticity and it no longer really bears any relation to what um, uh, the word means when we use it um, in a very specific context. So um, uh, responding to lawful process um, and the like um, does not qualify as cooperation when we use that term here. Mike Sizak, AP. Thanks. To that end, uh, was there any discussion of Mr. Combs surrendering? I understand he was taken into custody at a hotel in Manhattan last night, and maybe that wasn't the plan. Can you elaborate on, on how that came about and why that was? I'm not going to be able to get into any sort of operational um, details as to how he was taken into custody and when um, he is in custody right now. He will be appearing in court later today. Was there any discussion of him surrendering, given you know they claim he's cooperating? I'm not going to be able to get into law enforcement tactics um, or operations. We know why you did it. I've heard a lawyer talk about it today. Well, um, I can't get into the charging decision. It, it is very meaningful to us that weapons uh, were possessed, um, as we allege in the indictment. Um, uh, you know, part of the reason why this conduct was so um, uh, 
pervasive and um, and harmful was because victims and others didn't necessarily feel comfortable um, denying him his wishes, as we allege, um, because of the presence of, of, of firearms. Um, I'll, I should leave it there. Thanks. Last question, Jacob Shamison. Jacob Shamsi and Business Insider, thank you. Um, given that he's the sole defendant in this case and that you allege he's part of a conspiracy that involves members of his companies, do you anticipate a superseding indictment um, that uh, bring allegations against um, other members of his companies or other co-conspirators as well? I, again, I can't take anything off the table. Anything is possible. Our investigation is very active and ongoing. And I think a lot of you who cover this office know that when we say such things, um, that developments um, uh, are certainly foreseeable, um, but I cannot predict them sitting here today. All right, thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Right. So that was the prosecutor breaking it down. Now, <laughs> hello to all those on X who have just joined us. As you can see, um, some of you are just coming at the end of the prosecute, but you're probably seeing it. As I said, I am playing catch up, and um, so I haven't really seen this 13 days ago <laughs> because I was focused on some other cases, and I just thought this was when it first came out with the rage on his homes. I thought I was just a celebrity thing, you know what I mean? And I'm not into all that celebrity thing. But then as it when he got arrested, I thought, hold oh, on. Traffic traffic uh racketeering and then I read something about trafficking. I thought this is going a bit more. So what I've done is I'm looking at this case not on the celebrity part of it. Nope. I don't I don't take I don't take much notice of the music and whatever. Because I like songs. There's songs I like. But don't ask me the name of the artist. I don't know. Unless it's pink. Then I know pink. You know what I mean? And there's a couple of other artists I do like. And I know their songs. But I'm not into I was not and i I'm not into the hip hop. I'm not. And I was hearing a lot about, uh, what's his name, Justin Bieber. And I just thought, oh, he's just having a breakdown. He's been into all the drugs and the alcohol. He's just having a breakdown, you know what I mean? I never for one minute thought it might have something to do with Diddy. Not for one minute. But now I do, and I feel, now I've looked into this case, and I have, and still is, I've, <coughs> I think people need to pull away from putting the focus on Justin, why? Because <coughs> unless he's dealt with by professional people who know how to deal with people like that, know how to talk to him, then he's going to break and it, it could be disastrous, really could. And then you think, okay, but then you look, then you hear about another artist who was, who literally gave Justin over to Diggy for the two, 48 hours. I'm thinking, what the hell? Why would you do that? So then you look into that artist and you think, Oh, hold on. Yeah, now I know why. And people are saying, but why would you do that? It's because Diggy had a hold over... What was his name again? God. Let me look through my notes. Um... Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Look at his name down here. I can't find his name. But 
he lived with Diggy for years. So he knew what went on there. So he's a victim as well. So then you look at his manager. Why would his manager let him go and live with Diggy for a year? That's how I mean. It goes back and back and back. So this has been known for a long time in the music music industry. This is not just since 2016. This was when... Maybe even before Kim Porter. Maybe even before then, which I believe it was. Right. So it's been going on a long, long time. And it shouldn't have someone should have spoke up sooner. But then again, you look you listen to Cassie and I've got her indictment thing. I've got hers and we will be going through that one day. And you won't you know why they don't. You understand. Why they can't do it. Right. And when you read or listen to that book. Of. Um, Kim. Kim Porter. You understand. It's hard. To get out of a relationship. Like that. Especially when he's holding. Holding your life. And your career. In his hands. You know what I mean? So there's a lot goes into this case and many years go and it goes back and back and back. So next one we're listening to is Shug Knight. Right. And um oh, I'm gonna pull it up again. Let's get that one closed me. And he he used to be friends with Diddy. And I've been trying to I I've been watching these interviews with Shug Knight and I'm thinking I still don't understand what happened. I think it's one of these cases these videos where I'm going to have to watch it maybe three, four, five times before I sort of like oh so that is why, you know what I mean? Now, this is only, this is 15 minutes long. Right. And now, Shukna is in prison. Is it, not from murder, but some, somewhat similar to murder, but not murder, if you know what I mean. So, I'm gonna let just or oh, go, go, go back and any other human being going to prison. So, well, I'm not calling you and nobody else to get in, get nobody to believe anything regarding him. Like I said, I always say. Me personally, I don't jump up and down and cheer for no black man going to prison or any other man, any other human being going to prison. Because people think prison is always the answer. I'm not saying a lot of people don't deserve to do their time and, 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 and see what's going on. But at the same time, that's not no cheerful thing because when you look at it, it that's... Yes, yeah, Silk not, Silk not got 28 years for his part in something. And I think I did read about yeah, it. That man has kids. Mm -hmm. And whatever affects him definitely affects his kids. Mm -hmm. And I know there's a lot of victims involved in it. And whatever affects them affects their kids. So it's not a good thing to be talking about any kind of any shit about the next person. But it's always, it's not a gray area with me. And at the same time, Puffy didn't react or where he got or doing those things or those allegations by himself. He was taught from people before him and he did it to the younger people after him. And we can talk all day and say what's true and what's not true. 
funny truth part about it is videos, conversations, and people can see what they've done. Mm-hmm. But for it being happy and proud and, and say, what do people think? That's irrelevant. So sure. This is like I heard earlier today that I heard earlier today when Ray J was talking to TMZ. Mm-hmm. I got love for Harvey. But I see Charles always got some negative to say when it comes to West Coast people. And Charles tried to make a reference to say that what do I what, how do I feel when I'm in prison? Yeah, I'm in prison. I guarantee you I'm free more than Charles. If I feel like sleeping to five o'clock or uh, I want to sleep twelve hours a day, I can. Sure. But besides all that, the fact is it's not no competition who's gonna talk the loudest or, uh, or talk the best. It's not something positive that can help anybody. I don't get on no platforms that should be something positive. If it ain't positive. I understand what you're saying. I want you to try to make some positive points here. I get what you're saying about TMZ, but that's not really my interest, as you might imagine. My interest is in what you can help people understand about these allegations that Diddy is facing and what you believe he's facing on the inside. Mm -hmm. Now, what's most interesting to me is that you seem to see Diddy as kind of an Epstein kind of figure, uh, that Jeffrey Epstein, that a lot of people know what Diddy was about, and he, they were about the same thing, and that's why they're quiet. That's why J Lo and Ben Affleck got divorced because of videos that he has of her that now they know about. Where is this coming from with you? What do you believe about the people around Diddy and what everybody knows? Well, first of all, you got to start with at the top. You starting with the top, Clyde Davis, Russell Simmons, Andre Rail, Jimmy Iovine. And even if you take Jimmy Iovine, he had an allegation from him, same thing, he went away. You take Jimmy Iovine. They told me a universal the Interscope. I said, you know what? We can't deal with artists that gets in trouble. And your artist gets in trouble, they talk crazy. Let's think about what they see. Now, I was told that I can't do business there because of that. Now, Doug Morris gave Puffy a deal for millions of dollars. It flopped. So when you look at all these things and everybody want to say Puffy, 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 don't get me wrong. Yeah, Puffy stepped in his shit, and even if he wiped the shit off his shoe, it still stinks. But he's not the only one. Mm. They got all the tapes. They now, when you talk video. about the tapes, but this who, been going on what, for a long time. Who, hold on, Suge. Help us understand, because a lot of this stuff is a little inside baseball for people, right? Uh, because they don't live the life, they don't know the Let's world, call. they don't and know the your players. Telephone number will um, be monitored and but, recorded. Uh, that's just a recording from the prison. That's just saying that they record it, which obviously they do. Suge, help people understand what tapes are you talking about? Who has them, and what kinds of things do you think they show? Well, number one, <laughs> luckily. I wasn't, I wasn't the first choice, the second choice. I wasn't the choice to be at those freaky parties. But you know what they show. They used to have a thing in the industry, right? And the sad thing about it, I don't like missing the Usher. I don't like missing the Justin Bieber. I don't like missing all these people that everybody knows what time it is. So at the same time, in, uh, they used to have a joke. They never played this joke with me. And they used to walk in the Interscope office They'll go back there and they'll be like, hey, we passed the test. I said, we haven't did the test. One dude said, well, don't say that in front of Mr. Knight because he's going to take it offensive and hurt somebody. I said, well, whatever it is, I probably will take it offensive or somebody will get their ass whooped. You know, that was me in those days. But they used to have these guys, they used to call it the ball egg test. They used to take a ball egg, a raw ball egg, they had those guys put their pants down and bend over and they stick it up their ass. The eggs break, they say they're not ready yet. They ain't put enough work in. This is Hollywood. So everybody want to go act like they don't know what's going on. Hold on a second. Sure. You just look. So you got to do I have, I have never heard of anything like that. So if I haven't heard about it, just assume a lot of people okay, haven't heard one, that before. Okay, but you think stop, it's stop, on stop, video? Stop for a let's, stop, let's stop for a second. Go ahead, sure. Yeah, listen, and also. Have you ever been to any puffy parties? No. You sure they had a long time to think about it, but if you haven't been in those butt naked parties, even some of the preachers been in those parties, and they weren't on their knees praying for God. <laughs> See, they was praying for somebody to have come real quick or something, but I wasn't there for this poop of it. 
But at the same time, everybody want to look around and act like something going on is wasn't right. It's the facts of life in the industry. Not for the people who don't get in. So everybody, you got to look at it like this. You see a beautiful woman or you see a handsome man. And it was like that all their life. From elementary school to junior high school to high school, they forced to go to college, college, right? They always knew they had something special about themselves. But you take some of the Hollywood executives or some artists, they might have been the ugly duckling for a long time before they had the teeth fix and lip fix and nose fix, all the work done. Underneath, they still the young people with no confidence because they've been that way all their fucking life. So all of a sudden, if you look at puffy old pictures, don't look nothing like his new pictures. You know, see, they, they didn't do right, everything. But, but sure, just because he has plastic surgery, all, all I'm saying is, I'm not saying that you're wrong about rich people doing stuff to their face or whatever it is, but that's different than... The allegations that are coming I down on him. I'm talking about people. I'm talking about the difference. I'm talking about, okay, look, look at it like this. Hmm. I look at real plain and simple. Ain't no, ain't no whistleblower. Facts is there. But right now, I don't care if it's P.I., I don't care if it's Rick Ross, I don't care if it's Jay, I don't care if it's Snoop, I don't care if it's Game, I don't care if it's Dre. Nobody's stepping up on the fact that you know what's going on. Nobody's defending him. You You're had right. guys that in the scope. You're okay. right. Okay. Nobody is defending okay. him, but that's why I was interested in hearing your perspective. Named, hey, I'd like to say this too real quick. You got a woman that works for you is really incredible. You don't find too many people. I thought you were about to implicate her in the investigation. In I'm just glad you're not implicating <laughs> Dusty in the investigation, Shug, because I can't take that. <laughs> No, she's not an investigator, right, but right, what good. I want to do for her is, I want to, and look, I got to do this for her, but I want to turn her on to, the, to this, 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 this clothing line called um, Girls Mondays to uh, Sunday. Girl Monday to Sunday. And I'm definitely going to look out for her because I probably. To me, it just seems all over the place. It's like, it's like this guy here is trying to keep him on track. I'm trying to get him to answer the question that he's asked him. And it just seems all over the place. Like, he doesn't want to go down that route. I don't think it's so. If you don't want to talk about that or go down that route, why did you agree to this interview? Or was it just for your 15 minutes worth of fame again? A lot of shit for a lot of people from that place. But look... What I was basically trying to say is this. I respect your show and respect what you're doing, but the most important thing is is the, is um, there's got to be a solution because this has been going on in the industry for a whole bunch of years, for decades. Yeah. And at the same time, you know, nobody wants it to be true, and it shouldn't have to be true. But if we don't fix it and do something about mm. it, history will constantly... Repeat itself. Now, Suge, you said something yeah, early on that I want to yeah, get clarification for the audience, Suge. You said early on, you can't just look at Diddy in isolation. You said this was done to him. He learned from others and it was done to him and then he did to others. To me, that sounds like what I hear when people are talking about abusive situations, you know, hurt people, hurt people, that someone was sexually abused. They wind up being a perpetrator. Is that what you're suggesting? about Sean Combs, that he was sexually abused and he now sexually abuses? Yeah, I, I think that's absolutely right. I think he repeat what was done to him. And like I said, if you look at Russell Simmons, you know the truth. Andrew Rail, you know the truth. Clyde Davis, you know the truth. Jimmy Iveen, you know the truth. So there's not certain things that all of a sudden you got. Wow. That is a possibility, what he's saying there. But did he, he could have been A, B, U, S, E, D. Because, but you see, when, when it was happening to him, it was kept quiet, right? The people who was doing that, possibly, 
if it did happen, wasn't putting out that, oh, we've got this, these parties going on, we've got this parties going on tonight, you want to come? You know what I mean? It wasn't being put out there to everyone. It was just being put out to certain group of people, if you know what I mean. So it's very hush, hush, right? you got to remember, he's 55 now, so when did you get in the music business? Hold on. Hold on, I'll find out when. Let's see. Come on. It's taking the time. Right, when you... Oh no. Right. Coombs became an intern at New York's Uptown Records in 1990 while working as a talent director at Uptown under the guidance of label founder Andre Howell. He helped develop Josie jo and Mary J. Bly. Bly. In his college days, Coombs had a reputation for throwing parties, such of which attracted up to a thousand participants. Usher, who lived with Coombs for a year, yeah. Right, so... you you got to look at them, back at Andre Harrell, Mary J. Bly, Joe D.C. Did he develop Joe D.C.? Mary J. Bly. you got to look back at them and see what happened in their life. You know what I mean? He launched his Bad Boy Entertainment in 1993 and worked with artists like Maria, Mariah Carey. Right. Right, let's look at this. Because, as I said, you don't just think, well, I'm a celebrity, I'm going to, I'm going to do all this. I like men, but I can't put it out there that I like men. So I'll have these big parties. I'll invite the sex, male sex workers. I'll invite female sex workers. Get them up here so it doesn't look like, you know what I mean? No, I don't want that long. No. I'm not going to create a top there. <laughs> so, you've got to look back to, like, before him, like his manager, and what happened while he was with that manager. Because, as I said, you don't become famous and then think, well, I can't go out there publicly. But I'll hold these big parties and let everyone know I'm holding these big parties. Because eventually, the word gets out about these big parties and about the after parties. You know what I mean? You've got the party and then you've got the after party. It's going to get out. But because he had such a stranglehold over the women, who are at these parties? Like in his because of his record uh, because of his record music business, he had their career in their hands in his hands. You know what I mean? He could get them back in the gutter at a click of a finger. So they was being held to ransom by him. So they need to speak out, these women need to speak out, and they can't tell me that what they was doing, they enjoyed. 
I don't think there's one person who would enjoy what was going on in them rooms. I really don't. I'd still like to know that I've got my own, oh, well, I've got my opinion, I've got my own speculation, which I'm not saying. I think I know who Mr. X is. I think he's the ride and die sort of guy. And if you know by that, you'll know who I mean. A ride and die. He'll stick with Diddy it all the way through. Now let's see if certain people sp back him or not. Let's see who's going to stand up and support Diddy. Anyway, let's carry on with this. As I said, he's all over the place at the moment. That is, the industry is a quick business. It's been like that for a long I like time. Pie. And the casting couch is real, but it's for women and men. But far from all that, I think the most important thing is to, I feel like they should let Puffy tell his truth. I'm quite sure he's going to expose a lot of people. I'm sure he's going to move forward with it. I don't think it should be a situation like the Epstein thing where they found him hanging from the ceiling of the dead for the truth to come out. Do you believe I think that, the truth needs to be... Do you believe that Diddy is in danger in prison, and do you have advice for him based on what you just said? Well, the first advice I had, I don't ever want to say he's in danger, and neither should he say that. Because once he gets to the point where they feel he's going to be suicidal to itself, harmful to itself. Once they put him on suicide watch, you had a right to nothing. No socks, no drawers, no t-shirt, no blanket, no sheets. You asshole naked in a cell as a crazy man. So he definitely don't want to do that. And, and the other advice I would tell him, you know, maybe he should get on the Jewish diet. Because the kosher meals is way better than the, the food somebody else is making for you. At least they're going to come hot. They're going to come sealed, and you got to be the one to open them. That's okay. very important. What about people He's trying to hurt to go them? To jail or... I mean, one of the things is this. I don't care who you are. Prison and jail is a negative environment. If somebody can do something to them and get a name for themselves, they're going to actually do it. Or if they can do whatever they feel they, they got to do to prove themselves. But we also got to learn. We got to learn from our mistakes. Everything don't have to be a mistake. You got to better yourself. But we all know what we sign up for in life. So if I sign up to be a football player, I knew I'm going to get hit and I'm going to hurt some motherfuckers too. If I sign up to be in the music business and the entertainment business, if you fight for right, and being a black man, there's certain things you got to look at for the challenges. If they can't take the money from you, they take you from the money by putting you in prison. That's a fact. In Puffy's situation, he should go and get his time out the way. Not no life sentence. If he can get a lesser time, he should jump on it because he had a great run. I'm in prison right now. I had a great run. So I don't go too bad. I don't wait. Good man. I've been here for I've been locked up for Just to say to all those coming in from X, um we are listening to Sug Sug Knight. As I said, it seems all over the place. But the one thing I do did catch on is the fact that he reckons not being proven. It's alleged, allegedly, that he, in his opinion, he thinks Diddy was a B U S E D. In which case, as I said, you've got to go back to Diddy's manager and look into what what was going on from his point of view. What people know about his manager and all that. It can go back years, this could. 
Or it could just be Diggy was guy, but was too scared to come out publicly. So I thought he'd have these, what he called FOs, freak offs, where he can he'd get women from out of state brought in, male workers brought in, right? And he'd invite people to a, a party. And like I said, you've got the before party where a lot of celebrities went to, but then left at a certain time. And then you've got the after party. And it was these after parties that would go on for like two, three days. Right? And when you're holding people there and you're putting them on IV drips and whatever, that's not on. That's not right. They're not consenting adults then. Like people say, ah, oh, but they're, they're street workers. Yeah, they might be street workers. But you see, they don't have a say because a lot of them are owned. They have their owners, their PIMPS, right? And their P, their owners are saying, you go. Go up to such and such place now. You, you're going. They don't have a say in it. Right? It's not like they can say, oh, I don't want to go there. No, send something else. It's not like that. They don't get a choice. So, but to keep them for two or three days and put them on IV drips, I'd like to know who was administering the IV drips. Because whoever was administering these IV drips have to have some knowledge of putting the IV drips in, right? And they are culpable as well. They knew what was going on and did and said nothing. So that's what they need to be looking into. Right? I'm just making a note here. <laughs> Who pulled Right? Because they knew what was going on. You've got his uh, side to hand, the woman who did all the running back and making sure everything was in place. Right? I'll tell you what. You had. Right? Justin Coombs. They've got him down for soliciting prostitutes, underage girls, plus sex workers, and would engage in the FOs himself, Brendan Paul. Mule acquires and distributes distributes D-I-G-S and G-U-N-S. You got Frankie Santa, Santella. He carries the money and pays for the G-U-N-S and D-R-U-G-S. Moy boy hires the sex workers and participates in FOs. Then you got Josie Cruz. Jose Cruz is the IT director, gatekeeper to all recordings. Now, all these should be up with him because they all knew what was going on. Right? And did nothing. And in my eyes, they are just as bad as him. They're culpable, right? You got uh, blah, blah, blah. I'm trying to find out who MR, LR, and UMG are. I'm looking into Meek Mills and JZ. Now, here's the interesting one. Apparently, He's worse than Diddy. Right? He's worse than Diddy. But he's the clever one. 
because he's not the one going around telling everyone about, oh, I've got this freak off party tonight. You coming? Yep. Yeah. Right. See you at the freak off. Right. He's not doing all that. Whatever he's doing, he's doing it quietly. He's not putting it out there. But apparently, he's worse than Diggy. Now, I did hear, don't know how true this is, Jay-Z, could he be forced to testify? Like, would they say, well, if you testify against Diggy and tell the truth, we'll let go, we'll forget whatever you've done. Because I think that is wrong if they do that. I really do. Because there isn't just Diddy doing this out there. There isn't. There's ever music artists. There's ever artists out there. There's actors, actresses, you name it. They're, they're everywhere. Why? They've got money and they say, money talks. And it does. Money talks. It it shuts, well, it doesn't talk, it shuts people up. Right? It shuts them up. So then it can be carried on. Right. Let's just finish this interview off. Ten years, and I had a bad day yet. And it's, it's a lot of things we can do to help each other, and it's never too late for help. God bless us to, to have a voice. Let's use our voice. I had told Puppy a while back. I told T.D. Jackson a while back. Kid, come on, collect calls. We can politic. Because one thing for certain, one thing for sure, you're just not going to walk away with one scratch on it. It's do you think like that. Do you think that we, Diddy... He can do so... Do you think Diddy knows enough that it's a very delicate balance that... Maybe investigators will want to know these other names and greatly reduce his exposure to criminality to time versus what people would do to keep him quiet. Number one, I've been knowing him a long time. And we was friends. We're not enemies, but we were friends. He's not a dummy. So he's smart enough to work his magic. On top of that, this man right here, he's been involved with the FBI and uh, of his career. It's not like he don't have no moves. So I don't I don't think nobody should just count him out. Mm. I don't think he he gonna lay down and just crawl in the corner and die. He probably going through a lot of shit right now because mm. he probably going through a lot of withdrawals for the drugs. But the industry got him on drugs. And see they do these things to take control. They're not doing there's nothing wrong with being gay. If you choose to be gay, that's your preference. But they doing this to people for control. It's a power situation. Shug. Um, and they've been having the power of the yes. I I appreciate your perspective uh, on this. Right. So that was that interview. And as I said, and someone said to you, this goes a lot deeper. It's like a flipping rabbit hole. You've got so many people involved in this. And I think the woman who worked for him, I think her initials KK, she needs to be up there. She needs to have some charges against her because she turned a blind eye to it. She knew what was going on. Right? As you'll hear when we discuss another lawsuit, another suit against Diddy. Right, we're not going through that one tonight. But we are going to look at this one. Hold on. Uh, this one first. Right now, this is which one is this? 
that one here. This is this. It's a sealed indictment. <laughs> yeah, so far. These are like what the charges are at the moment. These are the grand jury charges. Right, let's see if I can get anything a bit closer. Right. Let's just check how it is. Yeah. Let's just take off. Right. Now, I've got to be finished by 12 tonight, <laughs> because there's a, a YouTuber I like to go and watch before I go to bed. She chills me out. And if that YouTuber is still in the chat, I'll be there, and you're live tonight, Lady K. So please, everyone go over and join Lady K Talks. I think she's on at 12 a.m. Midnight. I should just be up. I might be up. <laughs> I'll stay up for a little bit just to catch her live. Anyway, we're looking at this. Right, and this is the charges, the grand jury charges, the racketeering conspiracy. One, overview, one. For decades, Sean Coombs, a.k.a. Puff Daddy, a.k.a. P. Diddy, a.k.a. Diddy, a.k.a. P. D, a.k.a. Love. The defendant, blank, threatened and coerced women and others around him to feel, fulfill his sexual desires, protect his reputation and conceal his conduct. Oh, he did. To do so, Coombs relied on his employees, resources and influence of the multifaceted business empire that he led and controlled. Yeah, he did all of what he was doing through all these uh, businesses he had. Because that's his way of controlling them. You want your job? Yeah. You do as I say then. Creating a criminal enterprise whose members and associates engaged in and attempted to engage in among other crimes, blank trafficking, forced labour, kidnapping, arson, bribery and obstruction of justice. Sean Combs, number two, Sean Combs. I'm not doing all the AKAs again, right? The defendant operated his business headquartered at various times in Manhattan and Los, Los Angeles under a variety of United States-based corp corporate entities, including Bad Boy Entertainment, Coombs Enterprises and Coombs Global, collectively the Coombs business, right? <coughs> Hold on. So those are all his businesses, yeah? <clears throat> his entities, corporate entities in the Coons businesses, now his entities are the record labels, a recording studio and a power line, an alcoholic spirits business, marketing, marketing agency and a television network and media company. So they're going after all of that. Now, could they force him to, for whatever, force him, could they go and close all that down? I don't know. Number four, Physical Blank by Sean Combs. The defendant was recurring and widely known. On numerous occasions from at least in or about 2009 and continuing for years, Coombs assaulted women by, among other things, striking, punching, dragging, throwing objects at them, at, and kicking them. 
These assault work times witnessed by others and included uh, one instance at a Los Angeles hotel in or around March 2016. Well, if you haven't seen that short clip, I will be showing that, but not tonight. I'll show that clip when we go over the indictment of Cassie. I just think she made a big mistake by jumping and taking that money when she did. Because now they can't use her evidence. Why? Well, they can, but they can't have her as a witness. Where Coombs kicked, dragged and threw a vase at a woman as she was attempting to leave. We all know who that was. When a member of the hotel security staff intervened, Coombs attempted to bribe the staff member to ensure silence. Coombs' violence was also not limited to these women. He extended to his employees, witnesses to his blank and others. The, co- the defendant used the Coombs business, including certain employees, to carry out, facilitate and cover up his blank and commercial. Right, blank. These employees, including security staff, household staff, I don't know if I put anything over no. personal assistants, high ranking supervisors, and ever close associates acted as Coombs intermediaries and their conduct was facilitated and assisted by Coombs' control of the Coombs business. He had, it was either you do as I say, otherwise you're gone. And he won't just make you lose your job, he'll make sure you don't get another job anywhere else. Right? From at least in or about 2008 through on or about the date of filing this indictment, Sean Coombs, blah, 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 the defendant and others known and unknown were members and associates of a criminal organisation. In open brackets, the Coombs Enterprise or the Enterprise close brackets. Right? Criminal organisation. That's what his businesses were. Members and associates of the Coombs Enterprise engaged in and attempted to engage in, among other activities, trafficking, forced labour, interstate transportation for purposes of blank coercion, and enticement to engage in blank narcotics offences, kidnapping, arson, bribery and obstruction of justice. Number seven. The Coombs Enterprise, including its leadership, its members and its associates. So it's not, it's everyone who's involved in his enterprises. I don't know, I just got camping. Watch off my strap. It's itchy. Make my arm itch. Right. Um, it's everyone who is involved in his business. They need. I hope a lot of these are talking. I hope a lot of these people who work for him in these businesses, in these enterprises, are talking. The everyday people, you know what I mean, who just work there because it was a job. They needed the job. It paid good money. You may not pay good money. We don't know. But it was, a, it was their job and they need to come forward. The defendant entities within the Coons business, including but not limited to bad, huh? Boy Entertainment, Coons Enterprising, Coons Global, individual employed by and associated with the Coons business and others known and unknown. So all these people need, they need, I should imagine they are speaking to all of these people now. Right? Darling, speak, speak. It's like that hotel incident. Apparently, they paid the hotel. He paid the hotel 50 grand to get rid of that video footage. Obviously, someone else got all that video footage <laughs> because it's out there. Right? 
The Coombs Enterprise constituted an ongoing organisation whose members functioned as a continuing unit for a common purpose of achieving the objectives of the Coombs Enterprise. The Coombs Enterprise was engaged in and its activities affected interstate and foreign commerce. The Coombs Enterprise operated in the Southern District of New York and elsewhere. At all times relevant to this indictment, Sean Combs, blah, 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 the defendant was the leader of the Coombs Enterprise. Yes, he was the be-all of his enterprises. And I also think he was grooming his kids to take over these enterprises. Right? Yeah, it could be twenty could have been another twenty years, thirty years, you know what I mean? Don't know how long he's gonna live for. But at least then he's got two sons who could have took the business over. Particip uh, others, no, 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 no. Participated in unlawful and other activities related to the conduct of the Coombs, Coombs Enterprise Affairs. The the ease, these individuals included certain Coombs business employees, such as members of Coombs security staff, household staff, personal assistants and high-ranking supervisors, as well as other close Associate of Kings. Exactly. You cannot run at all those houses, right? You cannot have all those houses and not have the kitchen staff, the cooks, the chefs, the household staff who do the bedrooms, the cleaning and all that law. You, the gardeners. You can't have a house without all that. And they all knew what was going on, but they all kept quiet because they needed the job. Right? Now, me, I'm sorry, but if I took a job and I seen something unscrupulous going on, Right? I don't care how much it paid me. I really don't. My morals become higher than what anyone could pay me. And I would quit. I'd hang my noticing. Right? And I'd hang my noticing and never go back. But I'd also... Uh, anonymously email and keep emailing the FBI. The purposes of the Coombs Enterprises including, inclu included the following. A. Operating a global business in the media, entertainment and lifestyle industries, including among others Record labels, a recording studio, and a power line. What can a power line? I don't know what that is. An alcoholic spirits business, a marketing agency, and a television network and media company. That scares me, the television network, because over in the UK, we've got a television network and media company that are full of pedos. Sorry, we have. And I keep turning a blind eye to them all. The management and the owners keep turning a blind eye. So that is scary to know that you've got people, him setting up, he had a company like that. Right? B. Preserving, protecting, promoting and enhancing the power, reputation and brand of Sean Combs. The defendant as a music, musician, entrepreneur and figure in the entertainment industry. Right? C. Enticing members and associates of the enterprise 
including his league at Coombs, and in particular those who demonstrate <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> right. Including his leader Coombs, and particularly those who demonstrate loyalty to Coombs and willingness to conceal his crime. Then, KK, whatever her name is, can't think. I'll find out when we open the next piece of work up. She should be there. I hope to God they're not giving her any. Well, tell us this. You tell us what you know and we'll make sure you only do this much time. No. No. She was there. She needs to go down as well. Not just for 18 months or two years. No. She's a bit like that Giseline. Maxwell. Giseline Maxwell. She turned a blind eye to everything that Coombs was doing. She knew exactly what he was doing. And she turned a blind eye to it. I hope she could sleep at night. Preserving, protecting, promoting and enhancing the power of Coombs Enterprise, including the power of its leader Coombs, through violence, use of firearms, threats of violence, coercion and verbal, emotional, physical and SA. Fulfilling the personal desires of Coombs, particularly those related to Coombs. Blank gratification, including through the exploitation of women and the use of commercial blank workers. Now, I have blanked out a lot of words because I'm trying to limit the trigger for some people. You know what I mean? Certain words can trigger some people. So, anyone who's watching this, please, if you're watching this and you're finding this too much, walk away. Walk away now. I'm not asking you to sit through this. I'd rather you put your own health first. Do not sit here and think, well, I'm eating, I'm eating over what else is being said. You can always come back and read this in your own time. Right? I will be putting, especially those on X, I will be putting these onto X. Okay? So you can read them in your own time. These two documents will be put on X. And these two documents will also be put on my YouTube community page. And also on my Facebook page. I don't know if I could... I don't know if I should put them on my Facebook page. I could get kicked off Facebook again. <gasps> oh, no, I don't think I'll put it on my Facebook page. I might get kicked off Facebook again. <laughs> anyway... So let's carry on. Forced labour, interstate transportation for purposes of prostitution, coercion and enticement to engage in prostitution, narcotics distribution and other crimes and concealing the commission of such acts. Yeah, I've just read out certain names. Securing absolute loyalty from members of the Coombs enterprise, including those through acts of violence and threats and protecting the Coombs industry, enterprise and its members and associates, including Coombs, from detection and prosecution by law enforcement authorities through acts of intimidation, manipulation, bribery and threats of retaliation against individuals who witnessed the crimes committed by members and associates of the enterprise. Means and method... Hmm. Uh, oh, God. Uh, come on. Right, that was my alarm going off. Left, right and centre. Right, right, like that. 
and um, among the means and methods by which Sean Coombs, right, the defendant and other members and associates of the Coombs Enterprise conducted and participated in the conduct of the affairs of the Coombs Enterprise, including the following. A. Coombs and other members and associates. I'm just finding my tablet. <laughs> uh, Coombs Enterprise will buy. Coombs and other members and associates of the Coombs Enterprise will get the power and prestige of Coombs' role at the big Coombs business to intimidate, threaten, and allure female victims into Coombs' orbit, often under the pre pretense of a romantic relationship. Coombs then forced, then used force threats of force, coercion, to cause victims to engage in extended blank acts with male commercial blank workers that Coombs referred to as, among other things, free cops. Free cops were elaborate and produced blank performances that Coombs arranged, directed, blanked, by he arranged and directed blank during and often electronically he recorded. In arranging this week off Coombs with the assistance of members and associates of the Coombs Enterprise, clients transported and caused, caused to be transported commercial blank workers across state lines in turn, turn internationally, internationally. Right? Three coughs occurred regularly. Right, see, so it wasn't like once, once every few months. It was getting to the point where it's once a week, maybe twice a week. Right, you think he was having, if, if he kept these women and men for up to two to three days and he had two of these parties a week, there's six days this was going on for. Yeah? These some of these workers it have new workers come in. But so I think maybe once a week, maybe it have these parties. Because sometimes they'd have to be kept longer. Because if they got injured they couldn't let these people just leave the hotel with these injuries. They had to wait until these injuries healed up. That's the scary thing. Injuries. Oh, God. What these people went through, the men and women. And to think there might be children involved in this as well. It's just heartbreaking. It really is. Free coughs occurred regularly, sometimes lasted multiple days and often involved multiple commercial blank workers. During free coughs, Combs distributed a variety of controlled substances to victims in part to keep the victims obedient and compliant. Yep, they sure did. It's like I was reading something today, and um, it was about oh, it's the Cassie one, and I was going through that file today, and I thought it took Cassie to a free cough to a hotel, right where they had this freak off. They then come back from that FO, back to her party. That it was her birthday party or something. She was that numb, right? Numb from the uh, drugs that she'd been on. That apparently, I don't know how true this is, apparently he got hold of one of his, her female friends and held her over the balcony. What the feck? And no one reported that?
yet when Michael Jackson held the baby over the balcony, oh, that was all over the papers. But he was holding a woman upside down over a balcony. And she was that numb from all the drugs in that short time that she'd been given to get through this freak off that he wanted. He took her away from her own birthday party to go for a freak off at another hotel. That she was acting on from the drugs. That she couldn't do nothing. Right? After involved multiple... Well, hold on, hold on, hold on. Go back up again. Right? During Freakoff's Coombs distributed a variety of controlled substances to victims in part to keep the victims obedient and compliant. Sometimes unbeknownst to the victims, Coombs kept videos and filmed of victims engaging in blank with commercial blank af blank. After Freakoff's Coombs and the victims typically received. So Coombs had IV fluids as well. And the victims typically received IV flu to recover from their physical exertion. And from the physical exertion and blank use. D-R-U-G-S. Right. Members, and I can't get over, I just want to know who it was who was administering these IV fluids. You think of that uh, actor who was in Friends who died. They've got, have they got three people up on uh, charges for his death? One was one, one a doctor, and one was a mule, a uh, drug person, and there was someone else. So I hope they go after these people because that is out of order. Yeah, I'm glad they gave them IVs, put IVs, you know what I mean? So they, they wasn't too dehydrated and they didn't die. I'm glad that happened, but it should never have happened in the first place. Members and associates of the Coombs Enterprise, including high-ranking supervisors, security staff, household staff, personal assistants and other Coombs business employees, Facilitated in the freak offs by, among other things, booking hotel rooms for the freak offs, stocking the hotel rooms in advance with the required freak off supplies, including controlled substances, baby oil, lubricant, extra linens, and lighting, cleaning the hotel rooms after the freak off to try to mitigate room damage, arranging for travel for victims, commercial blank. Workers and Coombs to and from free coughs, resupplying Coombs with requested supplies, delivering large sums of cash to Coombs to pay commercial, and scheduling the delivery of IV fluids. But who administered the IV fluids? That's who I want to know. In or about March 2024, during searches of Coombs residences in Miami, Florida, law enforcement says various freak off supplies including drugs, right, blank, and more than 1,000 bottles of baby oil and lubricant. He sure liked his baby oil. Right. And his defence team are trying to say, well, he had big houses. He liked to keep them supplied. He'd buy in bulk or stuff like that. I'm going, get the hell. Right? Coombs subjected victim to physical, emotional and verbal abuse to cause the victims to engage in freak offs. Right? Coombs maintained control over his victims through, among other things, physical violence, promise of career opportunities, granting and threatening to withhold financial support, 
and by other coercive means, including tracking their whereabouts, dictating the victim's appearance, monitoring their medical records, controlling their housing, and supplying them with drugs. During a separate, during a se- during a separate from free cops, Coombs, among other things, hit, hit, kicked, threw objects at and dragged victims at times by their hair. These assaults often resulted in injuries that took days or weeks to heal. Coombs also threatened victims' careers and livelihoods, including if they resisted participating in free cops. Right? So if that's it, no, no, I'm not, no, you're not, no, I'm not doing that. Well, your record don't get put out. You're not on my label no more. I'll just, just take you off the label. You won't have a music career. You won't have any career. You won't have a job. You won't have nothing. You'll have nowhere to live, no car, no money, nothing. And that's what he held over them. Victims believed they could not refuse Coombs' demands without risking their finance, financial or job security or without repercussions in the form of physical or mo- emotional IBUSE. Coombs also used a sensitive, embarrassing and criminating recordings that he made during free coughs as collateral to ensure the continued obedience and silence of the victims. Oh yeah, apparently... Which we'll talk about on another you one. Uh, Cassie deleted any videos that were put done on her phone. Right? We delete them. If he used her phone to make videos, he she delete them. He then turned around and said, "Oh, don't worry, I've got other videos." And then on a plane once, he sat. He, he went and sat by her, or got her to come and sit by him, and then showed him a video on his phone of her. Just to say, look, told you, I've got videos. You will do as I ask, as I say. Members and associates, including whom security personnel at times carried firearms. On more than one occasion, Coombs himself carried up around his firearms to intimidate and threaten others, including victims of and witnesses to his ABUSE. In or about March 2024, during searches of Coombs residence in Miami, Florida and Los Angeles, California law enforcement seized firearms and ammunition, ammunition including three AR-15S with defaced serial numbers as well as a drum magazine. No, I'm, I think there's a way they can get those serial numbers back, pull them back up again. I don't know. I should hope there is. Because I'd like to know the history of those G-U-N. G-U-N. Hold on. History of G-U-N. Yes. Right, I'd like to know because most G-U-N-S guns have a history. Unless you've just brought it from the shop brand new, right? And it's never been used in any shootings or killings, homicides or anything. You know what I mean? But if it's been used, like when you say history, they can go by the bullet. Right, now most homicides, they keep, they can find either a bullet or something, the shell, whatever, and they keep a record of it, yeah? Now, if they find any of those G-U-N-S are related to a homicide from five years ago, ten years ago, who they are going down. So I hope these guns are being checked for all that. I should think they are. Right, but this was done, what, six months ago, these searches? 
it can take a while to get these tests done. It's not an overnight thing, it can take a while to get all these tests done. Right? Right. Members and associates of the Coombs are enabled Coombs control over victims by following his directions regarding financial payments to victims, advancing or suppressing the victim's career opportunities, yet which they found out with Cassie, and acquiring the controlled substances Coombs used to keep the victims compliant. But when Cassie first eventually left Coombs, got out of his hold, you know where she went? She went to a drug rehabilitation place to rehabilitate again, but get the drugs completely out of her system and not need them again. That's where she went. She had to go there to clear her own head. Right? Uh, let's have a look. Where are we? Members and associates of the Coombs Enterprise at times witness Coombs' violence towards the victims or victims. Injuries caused by Coombs without intervening. Right? So they witnessed this without... They wouldn't intervene. For Christ's sake, where's the humanity in the world today? Instead, members and associates of the Coombs Enterprise helps conceal the violence and abused by, among other things, assisting Coombs in monitoring and preventing victims from leaving locations such as hotels or Coombs residences. Right, these occasions included instances in which a victim was required to remain in hiding, sometimes for several days at a time, to recover from injuries Coombs inflicted without being publicly observed. Members and associates of the Coombs Enterprise also assisted Coombs in locating and contacting victims who attempted to flee his ABUSE. Oh, didn't, didn't do that one, did on. I will do it now. Right. Because... If I'm going to put these out, I don't want. Uh -huh. Oh, I can't do it. Hang on. Let's do it this way then. Uh, let's do it this way. Right. When employees, witnesses to his ABUs or others threaten Coombs' authority or reputation, Coombs and members and associates of the enterprise engaged in acts of violence, threats of violence, threats of financial and reputational harm and verbal ABUSE. These acts of violence include kidnapping and arson. Right. In addition, on multiple occasions, Coombs threw both objects and people, as well as hit, dragged, choked and shoved others. When Coombs' authority or reputation was threatened by the possibility of ne negativity publicly or legal action against him, including in or about late 2023, following public allegations of Coombs' crimes, Coombs and members and associates of the enterprise pressured witnesses and victims, including, including through attempted bribery, to stay silent and not report what they experienced or knew to law enforcement. On phone call, calls, Coombs and other members and associates of the enterprise, among other things, provided these victims and witnesses with false narrative of events in an effort to conceal Coombs' crimes. Coombs called these call Coombs caused these calls to be recorded on at least two eight occasions. Oh god, how much more have we got? God we still got a lot more. <laughs> god. 
Uh, the racketeering suppose conspiracy. From at least in or about 2008 through on or about the day of the filing of this indictment in the Southern District of New York and elsewhere, Sean Combs, blah, 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 the defendant and others known and unknown per being persons employed by and associated with the Coombs enterprise described in paragraph 6 through 12 of this indictment, an enterprise engaged in and the activities which affected interstate and foreign commerce knowingly combined conspired, configurate, and agreed together with each other to violate the racketeering laws of the United States, to which, to which Title 18, United States Code, Section 1962, see, that is, to conduct and participate directly and indirectly in the conduct of the affairs of the Coombs Enterprise, for a pattern of racketeering activities, as that term is defined in Title 18. Right, consisting of a multiple acts involving kidnapping chargeable under the following provisions of state law: California Penal Code, all that, like all the Penal Codes. Right, multiple acts involving arson chargeable under the following provisions of state law: California Penal Code four five one twenty one thirty one and 180 conspiracy, okay? California Penal Code, aiding and abetting, California Penal Code 21A664 attempt, okay? Well, we know about the... Oh, do I could do something. We know about the... Uh, how cars were going up in flames. Multiple acts involving bribery charge belong to the following provisions of the state law. Yeah. Bribery of a witness, attempt, aiding, abetting, right? Multiple acts indictable under Title 18, Section 1512, relates to tampering with a witness, victim, or informant. Multiple, multiple acts under Title 18, relating to forced labour. Multiple acts under Title 18 relating to sex trafficking. Multiple acts under Title 18 relating to transportation and inducement to travel for purposes of prostitution and illegal, other illegal sexual activities. Multiple offences involving the possession with intent to distribute or distribution of narcotics and controls. Oh, young, oh, young. Why haven't I got all these bad down? Why do you get all this lot? lot down? I'm marking them out. I'll just put them down as drugs. Right? Because I want to put these out, but I can't put them on YouTube with certain words and things like that. Oh, God. Certain words, song, okay? Conspiracy. <coughs> <coughs> distribution and possession with intent to distribute and conspiracy to do the same. And title 18, aiding, abetting, and willful causing. It was the defendant the, 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 the agreed that a conspirator would commit at least two acts of racketeering activity in the conduct of the affairs of the Coombs Enterprise. Notice a special sentencing factor. From at least in about 2019... 2019, hold on. Uh, from at least in about 2009 up to to and including in about 2018 in the Southern District of New York and elsewhere as part of his agreement to conducting affairs of the Coombs Enterprise through a pattern of racketing. And for assume Sean Coombs preventing agreed to in and affecting interstate and foreign commerce knowingly recruit, 
in charge harbor transport provides uptrain and advertise maintain patronize and solicit by any means a person knowing in reckless regard of the fact that means of force threats of force fraud and coercion as described in Title 18 on the State Code, Section 1591, and any combination of such means would be used to cause a person to engage in blank act in violation, right? Count to sex trafficking by force, okay? The grand jury further charges from at least in or about 2009 up to and including in or about 2018 in the Southern District of New York and elsewhere, Sean Combs, the defendant in and affecting in state foreign commerce knowingly recruited, enticed, harboured, transported, provided, obtained, advertised, maintained, patronised and solicited by any means a person knowing and in reckless disregard of the fact of the means of force, threat of force, fraud and coercion as described in Title 18. United States Code, Section 1591. Uh, and any combination of such means would be used to cause a person to act in commercial blank act and attempted idic and abetted and willfully cause the same to which Coombs recruited, enticed, harboured, transported, and maintained a person and aided and abetted and willfully caused victim one to engage in commercial. Why haven't I? I don't know. I think I must have got stopped for some reason. Engage in commercial blank acts, knowing and in re re reckless disregard of the fact that victim one was engaging in commercial blank acts as a result of force, fraud and coercion. Count 3. Transportation to engage in prostitution. The grand jury further charges from at least in or about 2009 up to and including in or about 2024 in the Southern District of New York and elsewhere, Sean Combs, the defendant, knowingly transported an interstate foreign commerce with intent that the Individual engaged in prostitution and attempted aid and abetted and willfully caused the same to which Coombs transported, aided and abetted and willfully caused the transportation of female veterans and to in interstate commerce with the intent that they engage in prostitution. Oh. Uh, as a result of committing the offence alleged in Cape 1 of this indictment, Sean Coombs, the defendant shall forfeit to the United States pursuant to Title 18, Section 1, 1963, and all interest of the defendants acquired or maintained, maintained in violation of Title 18, the United States Code Section, and all interest in securities claims against the property or contractual rights of any kind of according affording a source of influence over the enterprise name and described herein which the defendant established, operated, controlled, conducted and participated in the conduct in violation of Title 18 United States Code Section 1 1962 and all property constituting derived from proceeds of claims directly and indirectly said offence including but not limited to sum of money in United States currency representing the main proceeds of So really anything that he's used say he's made money off these free cops, yeah. And these this money is made has then been used to buy houses, cars, Holiday resorts, you name it. Holiday homes, you name it. That can all be sold off, sort of thing. Yeah.
As a result of committing the offence alleged in count of this indictment, Sean Combs, the defendant shall forfeit to the United States, pursuant to Title 18, United States Code Section 1594, and all property, real and personal, involved in, used or intended to be used to commit or facilitate the commission of said offence and any and all property traceable to such property and any and all property, real and personal, constituting or derived from, pre- from proceeds obtained directly or indirectly as a result of said offence, including but not limited to a sum among the United States currency representing the amount of property involved in said offence and proceeds traceable to the commission of said offence. Mm. As a result of committing the offence in alleged in count three, a prison. It's just the same, all the way through. What I've just read twice is the same again, right? So what they're saying is any money that is made and is being used to buy properties or whatever can be pulled back. What? No, get off, get off. (laughs) Substitute assets prov- provision. If any of the above described for for free, for, uh, I can't say that word for feasible for feasible property as a result of any act or mission of the defendant cannot be located upon the exercise of due diligence, has been transferred or sold to or deposited with the third person, has been beyond the jurisdiction of this court, has been substantially diminished in value or has been commingled with other property which cannot be subdivided without difficulty. It is the intent of the United States pursuant to Title 18 to seek forfeiture, forfeiture of any property of the defendant up to the value of the for, above forfeiture. For, oh, I can't say the word property. So if he's sold it off to someone else, or there's, a, say, another person who owns half of that property or business or enterprise or anything like that, could be a bit harder. Forfeiture. That's it, forfeiture. To seek forfeiture of any property of the company up to the value of the forfeiture, forfeiture from all property. Right. So really, he could lose all of his properties. He really could. And his enterprises, his businesses, everything. So, I just hope his children, I know the sons are, somewhere along this line, the sons are involved, at least one. At least one is involved. Why? I just hope his three daughters, he's got a, another daughter by another woman who's only two. She's with the mother though. Um, I hope his three daughters were never touched. I mean, that's why I think he did it at hotels rather than the hotel at his house, because at his house was where his children lived. But hotels, it was like, oh, just going out, I'll be back. Babysitter's out, we're going out. You know what I mean? So his children wouldn't see or hear any of that going on. So I hope that is what happened. But I think Kim will be turning in her grave knowing that her two sons, especially Christian, is possibly involved in this. I really do. Because if she's still being around, there's no way he'd have been, they'd have been involved in any of this. No way. You know what I mean? 
But that's that one. What are we on? Two hours, 30 minutes? No. I'm not going to do the next one because the next one's even longer. So tomorrow night I'll go over that document, which is in more detail to this document. Goes into a lot more detail. And what it is, it's like a, a letter that was sent to the judge. I'll quickly show you now. Right, it's just like a letter. This was sent, sent September 17th, 2024. And it just goes into more. It shows you the pictures of the GUNS and more details. Coon bribe witnesses and obstructed justice. More detail into it. The government's investigation is ongoing. Arguing. One applicable law. You know what I mean? But you need to read the footnotes because it says it's Steve Venture and Coombs number 23C 198 DLC SDNY Docket 1 Complaint Filed November 16th, 2023. Right? So they've got, they probably are using our information. Even though we paid her off to be quiet. But then I think, knowing what she knows forfeits anything else. Forfeits everything else. Especially if it involves trafficking of minors or women from out of state, in a state, whatever, men. Right, so it's not all women, there was men as well. So they are victims, they are all victims. Because they don't get to decide what they can and cannot do. Because it's not going to just go and pick up. Like, at one point, Cassie says in her indictment, no, she was told to go through online, online, to find these sex workers. Right? So, it's just sick. This is just all sick. Now, I'm going to leave it up there. I'd like to say thank you again for everyone X who's been here and thank you for those in chat on YouTube for being here. If you haven't already, if you want X, please share. Please, please, please share. And please show some love and leave me a comment. I will acknowledge you. I do acknowledge. Sometimes it might take a day, but I'll try to check all my messages daily during the day before I go live. Right? So. Please leave me a message. I'll do get back. Let me know your opinions, your views. How far back does this go? Does it go back to as far as when Diddy was first coming up in the music scene to his management? You know what I mean? Does it go that far back? Who else is involved? Will uh, Jay Z be charged? Will Jennifer Lopez have charges? Because her name's come up in 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 uh, one of the uh, in one of the indictments for handling of a gun. She had it in her purse when she went to the nightclub with him. It also comes up in the book that Cassie, uh, that Kim put out, well, she didn't get to put out, but her family wanted it put out last year, but then it was stopped. But now they put it out now because it's being arrested and they was able to get it put out. And I just feel sorry for her kids because I know she will be turning in her grave. 
because she said when she was pregnant with the uh, second child, yeah, she wanted him to have a good Christian name. And what did she call him? Christian. Right? And then she goes on to have twins and another daughter. I believe that, yeah, there's three girls and two lads. And he's got another child with another woman who's two years old. That's three. And there's this missing, missing adop uh, adopted daughter, Ava. I want to check up on that as well. Where is she? Where's Ava? The adopted daughter. There's a video out there, which I won't show yet, uh, because I want to get through some of these documents. So tomorrow night we'll be going through this document that's on the screen, right? And try and get through another document so that I can get through these documents. But they take so long. Anyway, I'd just like to say thank you for everyone being here. And... I will see you all tomorrow, same time, same place. So until then, be good, stay safe. No, I don't take